Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Bellevue cardigan, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. There, you'll find the written pattern, links to both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as links to all the supplies you need. This pattern comes in several sizes, from extra small to 6X, so you will need the written pattern to make the correct size for you. To make this pattern, you'll need Bernat Forever Fleece and USN 10 millimeter crochet hook or whatever gets you gauge. You will definitely also want to have some stitch markers for this pattern as they are used quite a bit to help us create the shape. As you can see here, this sweater is a little big to try and get on screen here at my little demonstration table. So here are some pictures of the Bellevue cardigan as it is worn and as it's laying flat. As you can see, it features big pleats, one on each sleeve and one in the back for a beautiful flared and very dramatic look. It has a cropped length that's easy to lengthen if you prefer your sweaters on the longer side. First, let's take a look at the finished cardigan. The Bellevue cardigan is crocheted from the top down. We start at the neckline and work our way out. We work back and forth in rows. You can see the front plackets overlap with one side being wider than the other. But basically it's just back and forth in rows in sort of a raglan style here with four increases until we get to the pleats right about the shoulder line. Here are the two on the sleeves. And then if we kind of fold it over here, it's such a big sweater here on our little table, but you can see here is the one in the back. And here you can see it has this really sort of cropped length, just a little bit of a waistline brought in right here. We seam up the bottom there to create our great big bell-shaped sleeves. And then as I say, you can make this waist longer if you'd like or eliminate it altogether for more of a cape look. But it's really a very simple sweater that then you can fasten however and wherever you like. You can use shawl pins, brooches, pins, whatever to secure it at the top, a little further down and leave a little fold in it for a slightly different look. Or you can just leave it open for an easy to wear casual cardigan. Here are a few things I'd like to point out in the written pattern. This pattern starts with a foundation single crochet stitch. However, if you prefer, you can chain and then just single crochet across as long as you get the same number of stitches at the end of row one. After that, sizes are listed in the pattern as extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, 4X, and 5X, 6X. You can see I've color coded these to help you make sure that you can follow along with the correct numbers for you for your size. You can see here how I've used those in the pattern. So here the rows numbers apply to the different sizes and here those stitch counts apply to the different sizes. Under special stitches, there is corner is used as an instruction here and that means to half double crochet, double crochet, place a stitch marker in the double crochet just made and then half double crochet again in the indicated stitch. Basically, after we get that stitch established, we'll keep working that in that marked stitch as long as we're making increases in our sweater. That's what creates that top-down raglan style. We'll also be making pleats, and I've sort of defined these arbitrarily as a back pleat and a forward pleat, where we work them, um, it's just sort of worked back and forth in different ways. I've done a live video before where I demonstrated how to pleat and crochet, and I'll be demonstrating it how to do it for this pattern when we get to that point in the pattern. But first, of course, we need to start by making our yoke. The Bellevue cardigan begins with a row of foundation single crochets. We start with a slip knot on our hook and then chain two. One, two. Then insert your hook into the chain closest to the slip knot. The first chain made, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through just that first loop. Then yarn over and pull through two to finish your first foundation single crochet. To make the remainder of the row, we start by inserting our hook under the two loops at the bottom of the previous foundation single crochet. Then we yarn over and pull up a loop. That becomes the chain at the bottom of the second stitch or whatever stitch we're making. Yarn over and pull through that loop. Yarn over and pull through two. So now we've made two. Let's make one more together. We insert our hook under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through just that loop. Yarn over and pull through two. So continue on until you have made the correct number of foundation single crochets for your size. 
So at the end of row one, you'll have anywhere from 44 to 56 stitches, depending on the size you're making. But today I'm going to be working with a smaller swatch for the purposes of demonstration. So let's go ahead and move on to row two. To begin row two, we're going to start with a chain one and turn or turn in chain one, however you like to do it. And then we're going to half double crochet in the first series of stitches. The number of stitches here depends on what size you're making, either six or seven. For our little demonstration today, I'm just going to go ahead and do the first two. We're going to call this part of the front flap of the sweater here. Then the next thing in the instructions says to corner in the next stitch. So if you'll recall from our special stitches, the corner is half double crochet, double crochet, place marker in the top of that double crochet. So this is where we need our stitch markers here. We get this established. There we are. And then half double crochet again. And all three of those are worked into that same stitch. So we start out with half double crochet in a certain number of stitches, depending on the size you're making. Then we corner. Then we're going to basically start establishing our sleeve. So again, the number of stitches will depend on the size you're making, but we're going to half double crochet the number of stitches called for for your size. On our little demo today here, I think I'll stop at four. And then we corner again. So in the next stitch, we work a half double crochet, followed by a double crochet. Pull up a little bit more yarn as needed here. Then we need to place a stitch marker in that double crochet. And again, stitch markers are gonna be really important for this pattern. And we half double crochet again in that same stitch. And then we've got our front, the top of our sleeve, and now we need the back of our sweater. So again, depending on size, that will determine how many stitches you stitch across here for the back. There we are, three. And I'll just go ahead and do four again here for our back and then when you've worked the number of stitches for your back, it's time to corner again. So in that next stitch, we work our half double crochet, double crochet, place the stitch marker in the top of that double crochet, and half double crochet in that stitch again. That has brought us now, we've got our front, our sleeve, our back, so now it's time for the other sleeve. There we go. So now with some more yarn ready to go, we can go ahead and make those sleeve stitches. So I think I did four for that first one. So we'll do four again here. Just more half double crochets. And then we'll have one more corner. So we half double crochet, double crochet, place a stitch marker in that double crochet right there. There we go. And half double crochet in that same stitch again. So at the top of that sleeve, now we're making the other side of the front here. And the way I've set up this sweater is with a slightly longer uh, flap to the right side. So a slightly asymmetrical front opening. There we are. So now we have row two made and we're actually establishing that raglan shape already. Let me get the hook out of the way here. You can kind of see how our sweater is being formed here. We've got our front cardigan opening, we've got our neck hole here, we've got the front flap, the top of the sleeve, the back of the sweater, the other sleeve, and the other front flap. So now we're just going to continue to grow out our sweater in all these directions. So until we get to the pleats, it's all repeats of row three. So let's make row three together. We begin with a chain one and turn and half double crochet in each stitch until you get to that marked stitch. So we simply half double crochet on across our row here until we get to a stitch with a stitch marker in it. And on our little demo, we're already there. So in that marked stitch, we can go ahead and work a half double crochet followed by a double crochet. And then we want to go ahead and move that stitch marker on up into this double crochet. There we are. You don't have to mark all of them, just the one on the row you're making. Then half double crochet in that same stitch again to finish the corner. Then half double crochet again in each stitch until you get to the next marked stitch. 
They just work very easily all the way across with half double crochets. And you can see with this yarn, you really do run through it pretty quickly, but you're also making some great big stitches. So you can make this sweater really quickly. So now we continue on across here. We come to our next marked stitch. There's the next marked stitch. So we insert our hook there. We make a half double crochet, double crochet, place a stitch marker in the top of that double crochet. We can move up the one from below, of course. There we are. Half double crochet right back in that same stitch. And then just continue across the same way. Half double crochet in each stitch until you get to the marked stitch. Make a corner in that stitch, moving that stitch marker on up. And then continue on across till you get to the next marked stitch. And that is basically it until we get to the row where we add the pleats. Then after we add the pleats, it's right back to this plan. Crochet across until you get to the marked stitch. Get to the marked stitch and make a corner, which is of course a half double crochet. Followed by a double crochet. Move the stitch marker up. Half double crochet in that same stitch again. And continue on across. So with every row, if you think about it, each one of those little corners, we're adding two stitches. So every row adds eight stitches total. So at the end of the number of rows you make before the pleat, you'll have anywhere from 76 to 120 stitches. Again, you'll want to check the written pattern to make sure that you're following the numbers specific to the size you're making. So we've got one more stitch marker left here. We've got a stitch before it. There's that stitch, stitch marker in the marked stitch. So we have double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet again. Don't want to forget to move that stitch marker though. There we are. So we'll move that on up and simply continue on across. So for now, continue working just like that, just as we've been doing until you've made the correct number of rows for your size and you get to the part where it says in the instructions right here, add pleats. So now we've moved on to the section called add pleats and it starts over with row one. And now is a good time to go ahead and mark your wrong side and your right side. When we turn and make this next row, we'll be making row one here on the right side. So you can take one more stitch marker and just go ahead and put a stitch marker right in the middle here or wherever you like to put it. Not so much in a specific stitch, but this will mark now. We'll always know that this is the right side of our work. So let me get set up here with my hook again. And we're going to chain one and turn. So now we're on that right side and we begin row one of add plate add pleats rather. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and half double crochet to that first marked stitch. We don't have pleats in the front, just on the shoulders and in the back of our sweater. So our front, um, front portion of the sweater are just simple flat sections. So we just half double crochet to that first marked stitch. And of course, put another corner in there. We want to continue those until we are ready to um, be done with our sleeves. So half double crochet, double crochet, move that stitch marker on up. There we are. Half double crochet again in that same stitch, of course. And then we are at our sleeve portion. If you remember, this is the front pocket. So now we're working over our sleeve. So on the sleeve, we want to have a uh, set of pleats, a back pleat and a forward pleat that work together to create what we would call a box pleat. So we start with a few stitches in and then we add our pleat and then we have a few stitches at the end. Again, the number of stitches are going to depend on the size that you are making. So let me see here. I am working with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. So let's go ahead and just do one half double crochet right there. And then we are going to do the back pleat. We start with the back pleat first. Again, back and front, these are just kind of arbitrary names I needed, or back and forward rather, I used completely arbitrary names because I needed something to distinguish them. So for what we're doing is under the special stitches labeled back pleat. So we start with front loop only, half double crochet in the next three stitches. 
So if we look at the next stitch here, and if we look at those top two loops on top, that V at the top of most crochet stitches that we make, there's the front loop that's facing towards us and the back loop that is further away. The front loop and back loop are always relative to you, the crocheter. So front loop, it's always just the one that's closest to you. It doesn't matter if you're working in the round or in rows, it's just the one that's closest to you. So we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next three stitches. So here's the first one. So there's one, and you can see that loop pulls up a little bit more when you go under just that front loop. And there's two. And there's three. And then we're going to turn. And now we're going to front loop half double crochet in those same three stitches because now we've turned and now those unused loops are front loops. So let's yarn over. I like to kind of yarn over it before I turn for this one. It creates sort of a smoother stitch to me. And then I can get right under that unused loop right there of that same stitch. Make our half double crochet there. And then the next two. So there's that one. And then there should be one more right there. And then we're going to turn again. And now we are going to back post double crochet around those same three stitches. So let's go back a minute and take another look here. This right here is that last half double crochet I just made. So that means this is that stitch. This is the stitch that we worked into and that's the one we're going to back post double crochet around first. So as we turn our work over, that'll kind of help us keep an eye on where that is. So we can yarn over, come all the way down here. Remember, we're still working to that same half double crochet, not the ones we've been making up here, but the, all the way down here. Pull up our loop. Oop, always a little tricky with those. There we are. And finish our double crochet. There we go. Now we do it around the next one. See, we just went around that one. So here's the next one right there. Come from behind, go around that post, yarn over and pull up your loop. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So now we've got one more. We yarn over, find right there. There's that last stitch. We've got a post stitch around that one, a post stitch around this one. So this one's next. Come from behind and around that post. Pull up that loop and finish the double crochet. And that finishes the back pleat. Okay, so that's kind of the first half of our box pleat. Now, depending on size, you need, may need to work a half double crochet here. Some sizes you need to, some sizes you don't. It just depended on whether or not there was an even number or odd number of stitches in along this section right here. So if you look at the written instructions, I wanna point this out because it can be a little confusing. That would be right here. See, we've just made our back pleat in those three stitches. Then we half double crochet in the next one, zero, zero, one, one stitch. So that means if you're making the smallest size, you need to half double crochet in the next stitch. If you're making the next two sizes, you don't, you just skip this whole bit. The largest two sizes, you will have a stitch to crochet into there. So that comes up again when we do the back. But basically that's what those ones and zeros right there mean. So on our little sample here, we do not have one that we need to crochet in between. So that means we go straight to the front pleat next. So the front pleat is the same thing we did for the back pleat, but sort of worked in the opposite order. So we start by working the back post double crochet in the next three stitches. So we're going to yarn over and that's fine. There's that back post double crochet we just did. So here's our next one right here and you can see how working down into that stitch there. This is the row we're making right now. So this is the row we're working into. So we're right there. We're going to come right around there for a back post double crochet. There we are. There's one. Then we need two more. Go Right to the next one. A little bit easier before we put all those half double crochets in there. So there's two. And then our third one. And then, since we're just doing everything backwards, now we turn, and this is a little tricky. We're going to yarn over, and we want to front loop only, half double crochet, but 
We've already worked those back post double crochet. So you really kind of need to fold those down out of the way and then you can get to those front loops right there. So right there are those back post double crochets we just made. We can just push those down out of the way so we can get to those front loops right there. So again, I kind of like to sort of straighten it back out, yarn over, then find that stitch that I'm working around right there. So I can just get right under that loop right there. And I can see one, two, three, that I'm going to be in the right spot. Get that first one made there. And then I'm lined up pretty well for the other two. So there's one and then two. And that brings us right up against our other pleat here. So it's time to turn again. And now finally, we have these three loops right here unused in front of us. So now these are our front loops to half double crochet into. So sometimes I'll use my hook to kind of grab that loop right there. If it's kind of awkward, get my hook up under there like that. Whatever works. There we go. So there's one and two. I'm just going right under the front loops there of those same three stitches. And now we have finished our pleat. So if we look at our row here from the top, it goes that way. Then we've got our box pleat. And then we've come back to the front right there. So a really neat crochet trick there by working into those three stitches in three different ways and then doing it the opposite way, we create that box pleat. So to finish off our little sleeve here, we then crochet into however many stitches there your pattern calls for until we get that next marked stitch and then half double crochet, double crochet and half double crochet in there for our corner. We want to keep moving those stitch markers up anytime we worked into those marked stitches so we can keep our corners marked. That's gonna come in really handy here as we go. Finish off that corner and then we come to the back and we do the exact same thing again in the back. Half double crochet however many stitches necessary to get to where you begin your pleats. Do the back pleat, do the front pleat or the forward pleat. Again, arbitrary names, whatever you wanna call them, but to create that box pleat again in the back, just like I did right there. And again, same thing, corner there, work a few stitches depending on size, another box pleat over that shoulder, work to the corner, put your corner in, and then just half double crochet on across for the front. After that, it really is just repeats of what we were doing in row three, where you work to the corner, crochet in the corner, crochet to the next corner, put that corner in, crochet to the next corner, put the next corner in, et cetera, et cetera. So here I have a printout. Unfortunately, my printer chose today to start losing ink, but I hope this gives you an idea here. As you can see on the full size sweater, as you crochet out right here, those, those stitch markers right there, first stitch marker, second, third, and fourth. And you can see how those really just guide the corners of this sweater. Those are our pleats. We're just half double crocheting straight across in the subsequent rows. So when it, we come back and work across that pleat, we turn and we work back across. We just crochet right in the tops of all those stitches with a half double crochet, just as if all this pleat stuff wasn't happening. So that really creates all the texture in this sweater. So then, once you've worked out the number of rows required, then it's time to assemble and add our waist. So when you've worked to the point where you're ready for assembly, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, but of course a whole lot bigger and with some pleats built in. We just saw that picture on the printout and now it's time to do the folding. Basically, we wanna turn this into this. So to do that, right here you can see I've got my stitch marker for the right side, but I'm gonna turn it over to the wrong side and then pull the front down, just like that. Let's do that again. We've got our first stitch marker, second, third, and fourth. We want the first and second to meet and we want the third and fourth to meet. So we simply fold it like that, just like that. Now, when these two come together here, we can go ahead and take one of these stitch markers and go through both of these stitches here, get them linked together. There we are. Now we have the bottom of one sleeve. Here's the sleeve opening right there. Hand will come out there. Then we can go over here and connect those first and second stitches. So let me get that in the top of that one there. And then we'll pair it up with this guy. There we are. Get this one out of the way. We don't need that one now. Where's our extra one here? There we go. Now, so now those two are connected and those two are connected and we've got our basic sweater shape. You can see here we've got our cardigan opening. Here we've got our armholes. And right there, we've got our neck hole. So now we're just going to come in just a little bit, 
for the waist. So on your full size version, let's go ahead and turn it over this way. And what we want to do is we've got our corner right here and then for every size, and this is one of those weird ones where it doesn't matter which size, but I want you to go ahead and try it on and then personally adjust. But to begin, start by counting in 10 stitches from the corner. So on our little guy, I don't think we'll have this many. So on our little example here, we'll just count three. But on the full size, no matter what size you're making, start by counting in 10. So we've got one, two, three. Then you'd count four, five, six. Go on in. I'm going to stop at three for our demo. And then again, same thing on the back here. One, two, three. Count across until you've got, you know, the same number of stitches here. Got one, two, three. And go ahead and connect those as well. There we are. So we've got our corner and we've counted in. You'll want to count in 10. And we do the same thing on the other side here. So let me get my stitch marker. There's the corner. One, two, keep going till 10. I'll mark that one. Do the same thing in the back here. One, two, you keep going till 10 and connect those together. Now, those 10 stitches plus the corner will be the bottom of the sleeves. And just right here is where we're going to work our waist. So I want you to go ahead and try this on. This is where you can really adjust for size. If you want a little more room in the waist, you can move those stitch markers back out. If you want a narrower waist, you can move those stitch markers in a little bit. Really adjust it for your size. I kept it a very much oversized fit, but with sort of one latch up here so it can kind of hang open however you like it to be. So again, you can totally customize your sweater to a, for a personalized fit if needed, or just count in those 10 stitches. Now, as you can see from our stitch marker here, we stopped crocheting on a wrong side row. So when we chain one and turn, we'll now be crocheting on the right side of the sweater to make the first row for our waist. So we half double crochet basically right up to that stitch marker. So there's a number listed depending on size, but basically we're just gonna go ahead and crochet right up until we've got those two stitches joined with a stitch marker. There they are. So then you skip all the rest of those stitches. Again, don't need to count them if you've counted out your 10 here. We're just gonna skip over all those, come to that next stitch here on the back. I like to really kind of squish that stitch together there. And then when we come back to the end, we're going to seam that up for the bottom of our sleeve. So then we can just continue to crochet across the back here until we get to that next stitch marker. And pop a little bit more yarn here. And we've got one more stitch and there's our stitch marker holding the bottom of our sleeve together. So we skip over all those stitches Come back over here to this next unmarked stitch. Half double crochet in there. And then just half double crochet on across to the end of the row. That's it. Let's see, I think we've got one more stitch here. And that is row one of adding the waist. So when I pull my hook up out of the way a little bit here, get our little loops out of the way. Now you can see we've pulled in and started adding a little waistline to our sweater. So row two of the waist is simply chain one and half double crochet in each stitch across. After that, we'll be ready to add the edging. So the waist row two, you can see here from the wrong side is just half double crochet in each stitch across. And then finally, we're ready for the edging round. So we're going to chain one and that puts us back on the right side of the sweater here. Always a good idea to double check. And then we start by just half double crochet, excuse me, by single crocheting, not half double crocheting, in each stitch across here of the previous row until we get to that corner. So we just single crochet in each one of these stitches and I'll see you when we get to the end of this row. So I simply single crocheted across that row and now we're at the corner because we're going to work all the way around. So what we do now here is chain two and then simply single crochet evenly across the front opening of the sweater here. So we're gonna turn basically 90 degrees or so and then we're going to start crocheting into the sides of these rows. I like to start by working into that same space that I made that last stitch in. Just creates a really nice corner right there. Then since we've been making half double crochets, my rule for creating an even edging basically when working into half double crochets is to work one stitch into the side of one row 
and two stitches into the side of the next. One, two, one, two, all the way across. The reasoning being, I like to work one into the side of single crochet rows and two into the side of double crochet rows. Half double crochets are always somewhere in between. And generally speaking, that plan works pretty well for me. So you can decide how much of the stitch you like to work into and work just as evenly and straight across the opening as you like. Um, everybody has their own ways of doing it, of course. You may have a slightly different stitch count than I do, but as long as you like the look of your front opening and it lays nice and flat, you'll be all set. So we simply single crochet, as I say, right across this front opening. And of course, on your full-size sweater, you'll have quite a few more stitches here. The actual number doesn't matter so much, again, as long as you like the way they look. And if you're someone who would prefer, for instance, a button loop, when you're working across this wider side of the front, you could also add a button loop there if that was something you wanted. So I am almost back up here at the top of this front flap here. You can see right there's the first stitch. So I'll go ahead and put the last side stitch right in there. I'll just tuck that yarn end out of the way for now to be woven in later. And then it's time to chain two again to create a really nice crisp corner. And then we're going to single crochet in each stitch until the stitch before the stitch we made our first corner in. And I know that sounds like a lot. So in the written pattern, again, there are numbers, but they're going to apply specifically to your size. So on our little demo here, I can see I've got a whole bunch of stitches worked into this stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and single crochet in the next couple here. We'll say that's whatever number called for for my size. And then we're going to single crochet three together. So you should be landing in the stitch before where you started your corners, the corner stitch and the stitch after. So we just insert our hook right in that next stitch there. And then in the stitch after that, and then in the stitch after that, and yarn over and pull through all four loops. Then we single crochet again till we get to that next corner basically, or the stitch before that next corner. Let's see here. It looks like we're already there here on our little sample. So we single crochet three together again. Insert your hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. Insert your hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. And insert, insert your hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all four loops to finish the stitch. Same thing to the next corner. We're now working across the back of the sweater. So let's see, on our little sample, am I already there? Looks like I am. So we go into that stitch and pull up a loop, and the next stitch and pull up a loop, the third stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all four. Then single crochet. Looks like we've got one more corner there. We've got our next decrease right there. So we go into that stitch, pull up a loop, in the next stitch and pull up a loop, that third stitch there, pull up a loop, Pull through all four to finish that one. And I think here on our little sample, I might have one more stitch I can finally work into. You'll have a few more, of course, on your full sized one. This brings us back to the other half of the front here, the shorter flap, if you will. So we need to chain two again to create that really nice corner and then go back to evenly single crocheting right along the front flap here. Again, whatever mathematical formula or layout works for you, and in fact, if you wanted to add some special stitches to your front flaps, you could do that, especially the larger one that will be more in front. In addition to adding a button loop, you could add ruffles or shell stitches or any kind of lace or fringe and really dress it up however you like. That's my favorite thing about crochet is there's so many opportunities to customize it. So we should take advantage of that. Make every project your own. Let's see, I'm not really counting my stitches too hard here or anything. I just want to get on down here so we can show how to finish off. And if we look at it right there, <clears throat> excuse me, right there is the beginning of our round. That's that first single crochet we made. So I'll go ahead and put another stitch right in there to finish off that side and then chain two, one, two. And then we can go ahead and break our yarn. And I really like at this point, rather than joining with a slip stitch to that first stitch, I'm going to go ahead and pull that stitch up there and use my yarn needle, might need a lar slightly larger yarn needle for this yarn, it is a, a large yarn, there we go. Get it on the yarn needle and then go ahead and just sew to that next stitch. And I think that gives it a really nice clean look here. 
There we are. And that just joins it right together. And then we've added all our edging all the way around the waist, up both sides, and around the neckline. So all that's left is to seam together our sleeves. So now we've added the edging all the way around our sweater, but we still have our sleeves to deal with down here. So I've cut a length of yarn and went ahead and put it on my yarn needle. And then we're simply going to use the mattress stitch to seam up the bottom of our sleeves. So I like to start down here in the matched corners and I'm going to go into one side from behind and pull that through. I wanna leave a few inches there, kind of grab it so it doesn't pull all the way through on me. And then just come up from behind on the other side, that same pair of marked stitches there. Then we can go ahead and get that stitch marker out of the way. And then we're going to work our way all the way up to that seam where we work that first crochet uh, round of crochet for our waist. So we go to the next stitch on the first side, again, come from behind and then find the next stitch on the other side and come from behind. There we are. And we just keep going all the way up the sweater. And it looks like, oh, I missed a stitch there. That's okay. We just pull it right back out. So if you miss a stitch, um, go ahead and pull your work back out. If you find that you are having a lot of trouble keeping those paired up, then you can use a series of stitch markers. Make sure you've got all those paired up as you sew. Because as you can see, it's very easy to accidentally miss one. So I've got my second one there. So it looks like maybe I miscounted when I was joining these together. Is it possible? It's entirely possible. But that's okay. It's just our little demo. So we'll go ahead and come in over here. Then come from behind on the next one. And just work our way up. If this happens to you too and you've made the whole sweater, don't have to undo the sweater. We can fudge it a little bit right here. We're just going to seam up right along that seam. You can't tell. Work our way on up. And then I really like to comb into the waist stitches, the ones the waist stitches are worked into just here, just a little bit to really close up any gap right there. We're already sewing, so we might as well take advantage of it. Then you can kind of straighten that seam out here. And I think that looks pretty good. So then we can go ahead, just take our yarn needle, go back in there and weave in our ends as we normally do. Go ahead and do that for both sleeves and you will have finished your Bellevue cardigan. And that's how to crochet the Bellevue cardigan. I hope this tutorial helps you make your own beautiful cardigan sweater. Be sure to go to the link in the description where you will find links to the written pattern, as well as both right and left-handed video tutorials and all the supplies you need. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.